normally at this time in the last 10 years that I've, nine years that I've been presiding here, I would have called Howie Schaefer to the podium to present the book award. And in fact, even a few months ago, he was still talking about being out of his hospital bed and being here with us, but that wasn't the way things happened. We miss him. We'll have to figure out how to get on without him. But in the meantime, Janon Walker, uh, as she did the last time she had to do this, of course, was when Howie had a book in competition and had recused himself, has stepped back into the role of book committee chairman. And Janon, please. Thank you, Ron, if I got this position right. Howie continued to do most of the work of chairing the book committee, and there is a lot of it, uh, almost to the end from his hospital bed, with Tazy conveying his thoughts and messages and instructions by email to all the rest of us. Everyone on the Dillon Committee, and indeed those of you who were on the Dillon Committee during Howie's long years of chairmanship, are deeply in his debt, and we miss him very much, and will go on doing so. But I'm very proud to be substituting for him today in giving this award for a book about, an America, about American diplomacy by an American to Jim Dobbins. Jim is one of the outstanding diplomats of our day, and during most of what I think of his, as his first diplomatic career, he worked mostly on Western Europe rising to be ambassador to the European Union and assistant secretary of state for European affairs. Later, he became the go-to man for several successive administrations, Republican and Democratic, for our, as our main man in conflict resolution and reconciliation on a number of places, Bosnia, Kosovo, Haiti, Somalia, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iraq. Have I left any out, Jim? Uh, any place that was a real mess, Jim got sent to. And I sometimes think he should have been walk walking around. Do you all remember the, that unpronounceable little Abner character who carried his own, or was followed by his own black cloud? Jim must have felt that way about a good many things. Uh, he won the Dillon Award once before for after the Taliban, his account of the negotiations that led to the first Afghan government after the disposal of the, of the Taliban, uh, where he was a key player himself. And, and today's book, the, the book we're honoring today, is the story of his whole diplomatic career. Howie assigned it to, Howie assigned it to his students at Georgetown University telling him it was the best depiction of what today's diplomats actually do. Well, that's true, but very few of us get to do as many of them as Jim did. Uh, it's a terrific book, and we're proud to have him as this year's honoree. Jim, if you'd come up here while I look for your certificate. Here. It has to be because it's the last one. Uh, we couldn't possibly squeeze all Jim's accomplishments into something this size, but the citation how he wrote as just about the last act of his life says, maybe better print, James Dobbin's memoir in Foreign Service, Five Dec Decades on the Front Line of American Diplomacy is a gracefully written, candid, lively, and altogether splendid introduction to the world of American diplomacy. His career includes both conventional assignments, political officer in the Consulate General in Strasbourg, for example, and breathtaking opportunities for career diplomat, dip, diplomats experience, such as the time he spent as a new Foreign Service officer serving as note-taker for the Vietnam peace talks in Paris, 
He spent much of his foreign service life in Europe, but wound up his career negotiating and then working with the new post-Taliban government in Afghanistan. The result was an extraordinary picture of what the U.S. Foreign Service does and how it does it, how it serves the nation. As the only author to have won the Dillon Prize twice, James Dobbins ranks as the preeminent chronicler, chronicler of U.S. diplomacy from a PAC practitioner's perspective. Jim, thank you very much. and a far too modest check. Thank you. In February of 1941, at what must have been uh, the West's darkest hour, um, Time Magazine publisher Henry Luce called upon his fellow citizens to join together in creating what he called the first great American century. They rose to that challenge. As a result, you and I had the privilege of representing the United States at the apogee of its power and influence. The, this first great American century is now in its last quarter, and it's an open question whether there'll be a second. We're gathered today at a time when American diplomacy is being devalued and American leadership is being questioned. We're gathered today on the top floor of a building filled with anxious people, anxious about their jobs, anxious about their profession, and anxious about their country. Should anyone read my book a decade or two from now, I hope it's not regarded as a nostalgic look back at a vanished era when the American representative was always the most important person in the room. I hope readers in the future will react not with, yes, that's how it was, but yes, that's how it is. Um, I'd like to thank Brookings and Rand Corporation for supporting uh, the writing and the publication of this book. I'd like to thank the Academy and particularly the Book Committee uh, for recognizing uh, me and for this award. I'd particularly like to thank uh, Howie Chafer um, for having shepherded this program for more than a decade. Um, and I'd like to thank you all for, uh, for being here today. Thank you.